Very good. Welcome, folks, and we are the Colorado Beer Trail presents Colorado on Tap, and today we are at the Bootstrap Brewing Company here in Niwot, Colorado, with Steve and Leslie Kazoos, owners of Bootstrap. Welcome. Thanks for having Thanks us. Thanks for having Great. us. Great, and we're, we're celebrating basically almost a little over your three-year anniversary, correct? Three years coming up on June 20th. Very good. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about, about how you got started, because it's a really great story, kind of, you know, successful high-tech uh, engineer or, or software uh, writer and took in a dive into the craft brewing industry. So, Steve, tell me, how did, how did you get started in brewing? Boy, um, I've enjoyed beer for um, a really long time. I mean, I don't know. It was part of our culture and our family, my mom and dad being European. Beer, wine was always at the dinner table. Um, and just, just enjoying it. It's part of the social, um, social life. And then uh, meeting Leslie, we spent a lot of time um, just enjoying restaurants, breweries, drinking beer, and um, I think when we ended up out in California, um, uh, we just had experiences at different breweries. Gordon Beers was probably one of the first places we mm -hmm. went to, and a lot of different styles of beers. Otherwise, before that, I was drinking Bud, Coors. Um, I think Leslie was doing Pete's Wicked Ale or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that was, that was my first experience with craft beer was Pete's Wicked Ale. We were out in the San Francisco Bay Area sure. and just had to have that. And while we were out there, Leslie bought me a home brewing kit. It was a Christmas present. And uh, being an engineer, that was kind of a creative outlet for me and uh, allowed me to try different recipes. Although it's funny because I think this, this morning we had a conversation about what was that first batch that, that I brewed. And I think it was probably a, um, a Bud clone. No. <laughs> Something it light. was just to Some, see if I, I could think they even call it brew. sessionable. Beer. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, but it was so much fun, and, and um, it again, it was just a creative outlet for me. Um, and, and from that point on, it was just trying different recipes and uh, just really enjoying the process and and the beer culture. And and what made what made you think that craft beer was something that you could actually you know, get into as a business and, and, and make a go of? Um, real good question. So that was, um, so I was working at a, at a high-tech company out here in, in Colorado, and uh, our company got bought out by another larger company, and none of us knew if we had jobs for six months as we went through this transition process. And that was really the catalyst um, for Leslie and I to start thinking about starting a business and we always talked about it we didn't know what business i mean i threw things out there like haircutting and <laughs> starting a restaurant and all kinds of other stuff but as we had this discussion we were always in breweries we were in brew pubs we were drinking beer we're talking about the beer and we're constantly saying what is it that we're both passionate about and finally exactly. one day it was like duh yeah we're always in a right, brewery right we're in drinking beer right? yeah. Yeah. yeah i home brew would we ever consider turning this into a business so that started a five-year journey for us and that entailed first thing we did was we joined the brewers association we went to the craft brewers conference in boston we met um just a number of people, wonderful people in the industry, and of course, drinking a lot of beer, different styles of beers. Um, we became good friends with a brewery up in Toronto called Great Lakes Brewing. And those folks said, anytime you're ready, if you really think this is what you wanna do, come on up for a week, brew on our system, and see if this is really what, what you wanna do. So as part of your kind of self-education, mm -hmm. if you will, you, you put yourself through, basically, you went to brewing school, right? Yep, you um, and then you, you apprenticed yourself at, at the, that brewery up in Toronto. Um, tell me about that experience. What, did that, what about that experience kind of said, yeah, this is for me? Yeah, so it was a combination of two things. I went up to Toronto first to even see if that was something that I was interested in. Was it what I thought it, it, it would entail? Absolutely a lot of physical work, a lot of, you know, just staying focused, a lot of mental, um, just the mental hardship. Um, and then after that, <clears throat> excuse me, just 
realizing that that was so much fun, that's when I decided to sign up for the American Brewers Guild. What did you find fun about it? I mean, like you said, it is a lot of physical work. I mean, I'm not I brewed a little bit, but you know, your your 50 pound bags of grain. And, oh yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's it's messy. It's oh yeah. It's a lot of cleaning, well, a lot of solvents and things. It was so much different than what I was doing. So being behind the computer, making presentations to the execs being inside all the time. This was now really um, just getting your hands dirty and smelling the grain and <laughs> smelling the hops and just physical and sweat and dirty and, you know, just, I don't know, it, it, it just appealed to me. You know, my dad grew up, he was a farmer out in Hungary and became an engineer and he always said, you never want to do farming. It's such a hard job to do. You're up in the early in the morning, late at night. And so I became an engineer first and then said, you know what, I want to get on the farming side of things, so. <laughs> Very good. So how did, and, and tell me how, what, where, at what point did you say, I'm ready to take this leap? I'm ready to quit a, a, a good paying job and get into craft brewing? You know, it was um, after I finished the course at American Brewers Guild, we spent a week out in California and Sacramento working in a, in a brewery out there. And Leslie and I said, once we're done, why don't we go up to Napa Valley? Let's just spend a couple of days. It's now been five years. We've spent money for you to go to school. Let's make the decision. We're either going to go ahead and start this brewery or we're moving to the Caribbean. And um, Leslie can tell you the rest, but I, go ahead. You got off the plane. I got off the plane. I took one look at his face and said, okay, we're going to open a brewery. He was so excited <laughs> after spending the whole week with all of these, these uh, classmates that had gone through the same, same school, and they had a graduation ceremony. And, you know, I said, well, you know, we can always move to an island, but you can't always open a brewery. Right. So we, we decided let's go for it. And it was really uh, that decision, okay, let's go ahead and look for equipment. And if we find equipment, let's put it in storage. Then let's look for a location. So, uh, you know, we, we, didn't, we knew we wanted to stay in NIWAT if possible. But the more important factor was the lead time on equipment is incredibly long. Right. And so we didn't want to look for a building and then order equipment and, and wait. So you went, you went the, the nano route, you a uh, seven barrel system, correct? It's actually three and a half barrel. Three and a half yeah. barrel. So yeah. you do two batches and let that oh, yeah. go and then, wow, that's, yeah. so three that's and really a half nibbling barrel. At, the, at, the, at, the, at the beer. You got it. So three and a half barrel, I do two batches on a day to get into a seven barrel fermenter. And as we grew and became more popular, we got a 15 barrel fermenter and now we brew four times to fill up that 15 barrel fermenter. <laughs> oh, so you gotta love it. I mean, you have right. to be passionate in order to work that hard to, to wanna and do what we do. And I consistency too, I mean, that's a, big, that's a big issue too. Tell me about how you're able to, to, from batch to batch to batch, keep your beer consistently good. You know, it's, uh, it's just part of the process, taking notes, making sure that you're hitting certain metrics and just having an engineering background and and not necessarily just being an engineer, but being detailed. Um, uh, you just pay attention to the details, you know, right. and it's, and, and it, it, it's remember, been now three years, so right. we've been able to be consistent on it. And I remember talking with you when you first got started, and you were telling me about how, well, we're just going to take it one step at a time, see where this goes, you know, growing and, and questions about, you know, what, what it looks like, what it might look like, you know, a year, two, three years down the road. Yeah, we're just going to take it one step at a time. <laughs> um, from, all, from all appearances, you've just, I mean, every step has been a huge leap almost in, in terms of just the way the, the tap room has grown. You have a great crowd in here consistently. You've got, you know, several accounts. Tell me how, how your, the growth of Bootstrap has been versus what you're, kind of thought or imagination for how it would I be. I think we wiped out our business plan in like the first four months. Yeah, we, had much away. <laughs> <laughs> we just, okay, this, this, we've already wiped that out, gone past what we thought we'd do. And so we just tore that up and threw it away. <laughs> and have you, have you been just kind of flying by the seat of your pants ever since? Or, or is there another new better plan or a bigger plan? How did, how did that work? No, we're pretty calculated when we make decisions. We do our research. We make sure that we're very comfortable 
with making a decision and that we know what it's going to cost, um, you know, and, and... But we did start out in a more conservative plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it just kind of took us by surprise, the great support that we've got from the community. Um, but when we started in this building, we didn't have the whole building. We started in a small corner back here. Right. 1,200 square feet. 1,200 square feet. The back, our current back door was our front door. <laughs> we didn't make it easy for people to find us. I mean, if you wanted to find a brewery in Niwa, I think it you took a year to, and a half before we had a sign. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, had to, you had to find us, and and they did. And um, you know, I I got to add too. It's not just about the beer too. I mean, we've got a great community. The folks are amazing. We always talked about it's not the money. Um, you really don't make a lot of money anyways, and. It's just beer, um, but it's the community, you know, really developing relationships with folks and just the camaraderie. We've made so many amazing friends since we've opened up. Musicians, um, you've got music, awesome musicians here in the audience now. Yeah. Um, it, it was a whole thing, not just beer. It was just and, a community. Tell me, tell me a little bit about how that grew because, you know, so, so many places you, you can walk in and it's just... It, it doesn't have that kind of living room feel or a feel that you know is, is comfortable. But you walk in here and it's just, it, it's it, it's comfortable. People know your name. How, how did that come about? I think it's you know it's really Leslie the way that she designed the place and the ambiance that she imparted. Um, it's inviting people into our living room. In fact, if you see some of these colors, the greens and reds. It's the same color we have in our living room, <laughs> and um, so it's it's. You find really a, you hurt. find a good paint color, you got to stay with right. it, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> and you've got some extra at home, probably. Right? Yes. Yeah, there you go. And the other piece is to, if you look at our building, it um, it's got character to it. It's not an industrial warehouse. It's down in the middle of Niwot, so it's a little bit different, and I think it's it has a little bit of a homey character to it. Mm -hmm. That first year, you said that you, I think you brewed about two hundred. 200 barrels? 260. In, yep. in, in the first year. Now you're at a little over 700, correct? We did 750 barrels this last year. Yeah. And where's that headed? Where's, where, where do you see this year? Um, we're anticipating doubling, um, but it, who knows? I mean, it could go bigger than that or. Right. Maybe we'll shrink. Maybe they don't like us anymore. I don't know. One of the, one of the things I remember I, I, you, you were talking about was, was working with Sanitas. Yes. And doing some contract brewing yep. with them. Tell me about how that's working out. You know, that's a great relationship with those guys. Um, we've known Mike and Chris uh, since they were at Boulder Beer. Um, they did a fantastic job in starting Sanitas. They, they started in a building that was extremely large. They're going big. They bought a lot of equipment, so they had extra capacity. We were at the point where we needed more capacity and we didn't have the equipment. So we just developed the relationship and um, it worked out for both sides. I go over there and I brew. I have a 15 barrel fermenter over there and um, they have a canning line, so we can over there. We can here also with mobile canning, but um, with Sanitas, it's just a natural uh, relationship, and there's opportunities to brew more over there, too. And it seems like now you're able, with that relationship with Sanitas, to, to meet the growing demand for your beer, which is, I mean, I don't, where's that going to end? Yeah, well, that's allowed us to increase our uh, packaging to liquor stores. Mm -hmm. We, um, you know, this time last year, maybe had 15 or 20 liquor stores. We're in 56 now. When we get our new brew house and our bigger fermenters, we'll still be able to continue to expand our distribution um, farther up and down the front range. Yeah, in fact, we are. We just ordered a uh, bigger brew house, some bigger fermenters. So we'll, re we'll be replacing what we've got here, and, and really? we're looking forward to that. So, yeah. so you're going to be expanding your capacity here in, yes. in, yes. in your your brewery here, as well as going out and, and contracting some for some of your specialty beers. Which yep. beers are your are your better sellers? It's uh, right now definitely the Insane Rush IPA is the one that's at all the liquor stores and uh, most of the restaurants. And um, but now we've introduced sticks and we're starting to see some pull there. We're going to start marketing that a little bit more, pushing that out the door. Um, in the tap room, it's Insane Rush IPA and our Golden Ale, which is a nice introductory beer for a lot of folks who aren't 
craft beer enthusiasts just right. yet, but it allows us to start them with something light. Great. And what's on the horizon as far as styles and, and things for from Bootstrap? Anything? Anything? I mean, more of the same, only different, or do you have some? Some, uh, some fresh styles on your, up your sleeve. Well, we've got some seasonals that we come out with. Um, you know, for each, each season, we, we have a Schwartz beer in the, in the spring. We've got a Skittish Ale in the winter. Um, the Meritzen will come out in the fall for Oktoberfest. Right. Uh, so we've, we've got those that we keep bringing back, but we're also going to continue to do some barrel aging. Now mm -hmm. that we have extra space, we can get more barrels. Mm -hmm. um, we love to play with fruits. Right now, we've got our Tahiti Weedy. It's delicious with nice. uh, passion fruit and a little bit of spice. So we constantly like to do fruit beers, and uh, Steve will take the IPA, and he'll introduce different hops on that so we always have a double dry hop right beer and, and you know one of my favorite beers that you and i think it's came from you is your chili beer because mm -hmm. you know some breweries try to do a chili beer and it's just it's a little over the top but but the heat the flavor of of your chili beer is amazing tell me about the reception you've gotten from that people love it or they don't it's <laughs> you know but we um when we decided on the heat level, I said, I don't want anybody to taste this beer and say, gee, I wish there was a little more chili in it. <laughs> so um, so it's, it's spicy, but you know, your first taste of that is going to be the hottest it gets. After that, it's just the flavor. Right. Um, so yeah, and, it's, and it's a fun group of people who drink it too. It's, it's a small group. It's a, I call them a cult group it, it, because who would drink a chili beer this spicy? But they love it. We've got one customer who comes in. He throws his growler down. We fill it up with chili, and he has two pints of chili. And while then, he's waiting. While he's waiting. <laughs> just, a, love just, those a, guys. just a little warm-up, right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you Literally. go. Um, so tell me again about, about your, the, the canning of your beers because you know, getting your beer out there to the public and, and liquor stores and things like that, um, you've got you've got uh, a, a canning line here that that you do. You have the mobile can folks that come and and, and can can some of your product. And then working with Sanitas, um, you just rolled out yesterday. Um, introduced a fresh new can, your your Styx Pale Ale can. Tell me about how this came about, as well as your uh, Insane Rush um, India Pale Ale. Do you want to take that one or me? Sure. <laughs> Because this, I, I, I mean, this, is, this is a great story <laughs> about how, you know, basically you worked with a design group yeah. and said, you know, we're looking for, you know, a, a, an identity for our beer and, yeah. and, and for Bootstrap, and we need that to be reflected in, in our packaging. And how did you end up with this? Because this is well, really an, a, 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 not, not, not a normal kind of uh, 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 packaging. We don't do normal. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> no, we actually, um, we partnered up with a company called Moxie Sozo over in Boulder. And um, I've been admiring their work for years. I think their branding is just exceptional. And so they, they sent in a team to interview us. Um, we knew we were going to do these two designs right up front. So we started with the IPA. That was the first one that we wanted to release and Steve told them, you know, there's a crazy amount of hops in this beer. And so they took that concept and came up with the rabbits. Okay, what would crazy hops look like in an insane rush? And so he introduced the predators. There's a snake in here. There's the owl. And then just, you know, all of the drama that's going on with these rabbits that are, some of them are terrified, some are determined. Um, just the, you know, the, the emotions that this evokes. And, um, and then, you know, one day I was looking in the corner, I'm like, well, what's a scorpion for? Because that's really not a natural predator to a rabbit. Right. And then it, it, I realized I do music pairings with our beer. And the <laughs> Scorpions is one of the bands that okay. I recommend goes well <laughs> with Insane Rush. Excellent. Um, there's a hidden cowbell, you know, just just a lot of fun. So that's that's one of the things that really that really uh, uh, kind of spoke to me about these cans is, you know, if you're if you're a regular here, 
they're little, they're little things like the cowbell that you get. It's like little inside jokes mm -hmm. in the labeling that, uh, that make these really fun and, and different. I mean, you know, nowhere on there doesn't say bootstrap you know, brewing really big. It's on the back, obviously, but, but it's uh, on the front. It, it has a look yeah. that says bootstrap, but it doesn't have to say bootstrap. Right, what, what, and, you uh, know, and we told them we're whimsical, we're fun. Um, I love the animal theme. I mean, mm -hmm. we've, with all of our other beers, um, our characters of, of other animals, so we wanted to stay with the animal theme, and so they really, really just captured our personality when they interviewed us and came out with this, and we loved it. We That's just great. loved it, and they, you know, at that point said, okay, well, the artist has a concept for sticks, and it's, you know, the beavers chewing on, <laughs> chewing on logs, and we said, yes, absolutely go with that. Um, and so, something that we talked about earlier, too, was um, not everybody knows the story on here, and if you know right. the story, you're kind of in the know, right? right. You, you're one, you're one of the cool go, what's, kids. What's, what's, yeah, you're one of the cool kids. One of the bootstrap <laughs> cool kids. Yeah. You know, like, what's the scorpion about? I don't know. So what's what's next um, in line for getting getting the can treatment? But you have a do, is there well your we next beer we just up? announced this yesterday. Um, it'll probably be hitting the liquor store shelves next month. Okay. Um, I you know we don't we haven't identified a third skew yet. But we do have some really delicious beers that have fun names that we could have a lot of fun with. So um, definitely we will roll out cans. We prefer the can over the bottle. Um, right. Because you used to, used to have, you had a 22-ounce bomber mm -hmm. um, bottling line. Um, is that... Did, did, is that still the cans active are or no? so much more popular than mm -hmm. bottles? Um, yeah, as soon as we started releasing the cans, um, we just didn't have time to do the bombers anymore. All the effort has been going into doing production on the cans, and we decided it, it's kind of funny. We went back and forth on cans and bottles, cans and bottles. There's pros and cons, and you know, the just being in Colorado and how outdoorsy everybody is. This is something you can take to the lake. You can take whitewater right. river rafting. Up in the and parks. You can't, yeah, and you can't yeah. with bottles. And I can ride my horse and drink a can of beer. And, the, and when we were breaking bottles in the hot tub, it was like, that okay, was just I'm deal done. Breaker. We're doing cans now. <laughs> yeah, that kind of, that kind of ruins the, the whole vibe. It, it the does. Tub. It does. Don't sit bottle. in that corner. Yeah, or, yeah right anyway, right? <laughs> Fantastic. So um, it looks like you're, you're, you're set to grow a little bit more this year, actually quite a bit more this year. Um, and that sounds like a great move. Um, and, and some new brewing equipment. Any any other any other changes for the tap room, or just more of the same, only only bigger? Yeah, I mean, music is always important to us. We're going to continue to to offer music. Um, we will probably work on the patio area and create more of a beer garden at, atmosphere mm -hmm. at some point. Um, but definitely for packaging growth. Uh, with the new equipment that we're getting, we think we can. Yeah, we'll triple. we'll we'll get up to three, four thousand barrels, but that's about all that this place can handle. Right. And at that point, we can just decide: Are we happy? Is this good? You know. Right. Um, the way we act, we're hard. It, it, it's hard for us to just stay even keeled and 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 lay low and stagnant. It always seems like, what's the next new adventure? And so. Who knows? I, if we have to grow, it'll, it'll probably be somewhere else. We do have a little bit of property here that we could put another structure if we wanted to. Um, but we're committed we'll to, we live in Niwot. We're this will always, always be the here. tasting room yep. and some of our, our one-off beers you know, will always be brewed in this place. If we needed more production, we could get a, a second place. You know, one other thing I'd like to talk about too is a little bit of a legacy that you've established. I mean, and, and it's in its second year now, but uh, was about a year and a half ago, a conversation, Joe Ward, Scott Conlon, yes. my colleague Travis Bush, um, and you guys started talking about what, about beer festivals. Because, you know, the beer festivals, there's now there's almost a festival every weekend right. somewhere on the front range. And, uh, and, you know, you started talking about what makes a good festival. And 
out of that came the new brew festival that uh, is held here in Niwot. It's a nice, easy, family kind of oriented um, uh, festival, small, but involves breweries that are five years old and younger. Tell me a little bit about how that came about. Yeah, you know, um, that first year, Leslie and I hit every brew festival, every weekend. Sometimes we doubled up and had to split people off to different festivals. And what we found was a lot of times we were buried in the festivals. We'd be next to uh, Bells or we'd be next to Oscar Blues and nobody knew us. And everybody was in that line. Right. And um, we thought, how fun would it be to one day have a festival, especially here in Niwot, um, where we introduced people to smaller breweries that are within a certain radius of Niwot. Easy to access, but maybe you don't have an opportunity to go see these smaller breweries. And why don't we get 20 or 30 breweries to this festival, five years younger, everybody can just go to this festival and taste everybody's beer, and then you can always go to to their place once you're like, wow, that's amazing beer. You know, and the, and the best part about these smaller breweries is the owner and the brewer show up. Right. Yeah, and so it's right. a little bit more intimate. Sure. And so it's, we did that the first year, last year with Colorado Beer Trail, um, great help, and uh, it was a hit. It was just, it was sold, amazing. Sold out before, before the event even happened. Because that's coming up the second Saturday, right before Mother's Day, mm -hmm. coming Got up in it. May. Yep. I think there's still a couple tickets left, so go out and get them now while they're still available. Yep. But uh, that's, it, just it's two really. Tickets, right? Two left. I think there are two. <laughs> There's now, two left. One. One, one left. One. Um, <laughs> that was quick. <laughs> but it is. It's like you said. It's a, it's a smaller festival. I think they limit it to a thousand, twelve hundred yep. people. Um, there's like, thirty-two or so breweries here um, yep. coming up uh, at the at the second annual yep. festival. So, congratulations on that too, because that's I think a, a real testament to to uh, to making or showcasing the newer brewers and, and what they can do and kind of giving them the spotlight. Um, but Leslie and Steve, I just want to thank you very much for being part of Colorado on Tap. And uh, the Colorado Beer Trail is grateful to land here at the uh, Bootstrap Tap Room here in Niwot, Colorado. And, uh, and thanks to our audience. Um, looks like everybody uh, could use a beer. But uh, <laughs> so we'll, 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 uh, we'll, we'll say farewell until we meet on the Colorado Beer Trail again. You Steve, and Leslie, yeah. thanks, and thanks to uh, to all of you. Cheers, and uh, we'll see you on the Colorado Beer Trail.